Am I wrong for asking my boyfriend to charge his family member for fraud? Backstory, I, 27 female, and my boyfriend, 34 male, have been together for five years and have worked really hard to save for a house. The house won't be built until the end of 2022. Last week, we received some shocking news when my boyfriend's credit score came back as being bad. There was activity on the statement that was 100% not his and a credit card that has gone into default over the last six months. This credit card was originally my boyfriend's, but he swears he closed the account and canceled the card in mid-2019. Long story short, we discovered that a family member that was living with him a few years ago had gotten a hold of the card at some point and has been using the card on and off since 2019. They defaulted on payments in early 2020, but paid this off, then defaulted again in December of last year and the account is still in default with over 5,000 in owed charges and late fees. The family member had diverted these to their address. My boyfriend had zero knowledge of this as he hasn't had access to the account after he closed it and hasn't been receiving statements or notices from the bank. We are now unable to successfully apply for a bank loan for our house as they won't lend to my boyfriend with his credit the way it is. Our options are to 1. Proceed with fraud investigations and charges in the family member allowing us to prove this is no fault of my boyfriend's and successfully secure the loan. 2. Boyfriend pays a debt and we wait at least two years from the payoff date for his credit to regain some loss. Option two is sets us back at least three years in starting a family and our lives as homeowners. This will also not allow my boyfriend to secure a bank loan to start up his own business he's been dreaming of starting for a few years. This has devastated us and put a massive delay in our plans. My boyfriend doesn't like conflict and is going with option two. He isn't even planning on mentioning anything to the family member. He wants it all to go away and thinks his family member is going through a rough time. I want my boyfriend to proceed with fraud charges and investigation. We have worked too hard to not have our dream house and him owning his own business. So am I the asshole for pushing my opinion on my boyfriend? He said you're both working hard. Why can't you use your credit? If you're saying you guys both work hard, you have all this money, you're 27. You don't got the credit to get a house. I don't think you get it. You got it really choice. You don't get to push it. It's not your credit. He said no. Halas, done. Sucks. My 29 female, husband 32 male of three years, said something I can't move on from. We have a job that requires us to wake up very early in the morning. That's how we met. He usually wakes up before me and makes me breakfast. He's been doing this since we got married. He's sweet and caring like that. He's also the funniest, genuine, and friendliest person I know. I love him and know that he loves me back. Our relationship has always been stable. Now, I'm not so sure. This morning while we were having breakfast, he calmly asked me to kill him if I ever caught him cheating. I initially brushed it off as a joke and replied, likewise. Then he said that he'd kill me if he found me cheating and he would enjoy it. I didn't know how to react. I just got chills. He's never been like this and I can't imagine him saying things like this. All day at work, I've been thinking, what did I do wrong? Did he read my messages and find something off? Did he see me talking with someone inappropriately? I don't know. What should I say to him? You don't. You listen to your gut and you run away. Am I the asshole for telling my boyfriend not to spit in our food? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're currently not speaking because of this issue. Mm -hmm. Since I find it gross and my boyfriend can't see my problem with it. I do most of the cooking in our relationship, which I'm fine with. Occasionally, my boyfriend will want to do some cooking together slash do some baking. The one thing I cannot stand is a habit he has when it comes to food. If my boyfriend thinks something is too dry or needs a better consistency, he will use his own spit and put it in the food. For example, the other day we were icing homemade cookies and I caught him, quote, thinning out the icing mixture by spitting inside the bowl and mixing it in. Free me. <laughs> and I just find it gross. His reply is to shrug and tell me that I get more of his saliva in my mouth when we kiss anyways. <laughs> So it shouldn't be a big deal and makes literally no difference. Am I the asshole for not wanting my boyfriend to spit in our food when we cook together? Are you in your body when you type this? Am I the asshole for not attending my sister's wedding since my husband is not invited? Let me start by saying, I do understand my husband's behavior is inappropriate, but like all of us, he's not perfect, and I took vows to him to stand by him and accept him as a whole person, including his flaws. Wow, she's really leading it up. Yeah. So, my husband has a for urinating on himself in public. <laughs> I think No. It <laughs> I think it's the humiliation aspect. So sometimes, not every time, we get together with my family, he will pee his pants. But overall, it's not really that disruptive. He just stands up and says something like, quote, Oh no, I've peed myself. Then he goes to the bathroom and changes. I always bring a change of pants and underwear for him in case this happens. And when he gets back, we just move on and don't talk about it. So we've told my family he has a medical condition that causes him to not have full control of his bladder. I told them the reason he doesn't wear adult diapers is that he's ashamed of needing diapers at his age, so he's basically in denial that he needs them and refuses to wear them. Well now, my sister's getting married, 
and she says my husband can't come because she doesn't want him disrupting the wedding by peeing his pants. I told him it was unfair to exclude him over a medical condition he can't help, which is true as far as she knows, but she said it's his own choice to refuse to wear adult diapers, so it is his fault. I told her it's her wedding and she can invite who she wants, but if my husband isn't invited, I'm not coming. He loves my family and I know it really hurts him to be excluded from the wedding just because of a he can't help having. He's been crying, but he can't control himself and now my family doesn't even want him around. He told me it's my choice to go if I want and that he won't be mad, but I know he'd be really sad if I went. I love my sister and family, but my husband is my life partner. So I told my sister I won't make it to the wedding and now she's extremely angry with me saying I'm a bad sister because I won't be there to support her. She's marrying a woman, so she also said it makes it look like I'm a homophobe if I don't show up to support their union. I told her I'd love to come if my husband is invited, but she said she can't stand the thought of him disrupting the ceremony or reception by peeing his pants and denouncing it. I told her how much it hurts my husband that he's excluded, but she doesn't care. I said, fine, but that means I can't come. But he can't control it? Like, he couldn't be like, I'll take the, the wedding day off? You know what I mean, Dustin? <laughs> That is a good question and not one I am qualified to answer. I don't I don't know. I think like if you get to a certain point of the like maybe like once you're so far gone in like How are you guys so chill about this? <laughs> My wife and I had our first child around two months ago. She was home isolated during her entire pregnancy after the six month mark because of some pregnancy complications. We had also agreed that the first two months after birth, our parents and siblings would be the only ones allowed to visit and see the baby, and our friends and the rest of the relatives could wait. As soon as the baby turned two months, my wife started trying to get back into her social life again. Sometimes she'd bring the baby with her, but sometimes she'd expect me to babysit. Whenever I couldn't babysit, she'd call her mom and ask her if she could care for the baby for a few hours. My wife's a great mom and she truly cares for our baby, but it's frustrating how she feels the need to go out the entire time. One day while she was out shopping with a friend of hers, I was babysitting the kid and my mom visited me and asked where my wife was. I told her that she's out with a friend. My mom got very mad about how my wife went out and she told me that I have no backbone for not calling her out and telling her to stay home with the baby. I told my mom that I'd handle it. My mom waited until my wife got back home and she started scolding her. It wasn't a proud moment of me and I really didn't want my mom to get involved but my wife needed to hear from someone else too. My mom told my wife that she's irresponsible and that she should cut down the meetings with her friends and stay home to care for the kid as a proper mother would. My wife tried to defend herself by saying that I was always out with my friends both during her pregnancy and after she gave birth but both I and my mom tried to explain how me going out is not the same as her going out. My mom told her that the little walks and coffee hangouts with her friends are over and that she better get used to the fact that her social life will now be limited. It sucks but that's how it is. I agreed with my mother on all that and my wife is not speaking to me for days. She even sleeps in the guest room now and took the baby's crib there as well. She'll only cook for herself and the baby and not for me. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law have texted me saying I was a huge asshole for this and so was my mom, so I shouldn't be surprised that my wife is acting like that towards me. Am I the asshole for siding with my mother when she and my wife got into an argument? This last week, me and my wife just finished a major project to redo our entire dining room. This included buying an incredibly fancy marble dining table and new dining chairs. My wife is a professional chef and has dreamed since she was a child of having a high-end dining room to host dinner parties in. This project has been one that's been on the back burner for a while now, and last year I got an unexpected bonus that I decided to use to make this dream a reality. Suffice to say, my wife is over the moon. To celebrate this, her parents, my parents, my two siblings, and my brother's wife are coming over for the dinner party my wife has dreamed of hosting since she was a child. This is all of our immediate family, except for my wife's only sibling, her sister, and her husband. The reason for this is simple. My brother-in-law physically cannot attend the party as we have it planned. My brother-in-law is 500 plus pounds. To avoid the whole fat shaming conversation that I know this will bring up, I'll talk about why we didn't invite him. The chairs that we bought cannot support him, and even then, he is unable to sit upright due to his weight for long periods of time. He would require to either sit out in the living room on the couch or to sit in a medical chair that we cannot get into the home. It will not fit through our doors. Him sitting in there would literally defeat the point of hosting a dinner party for our new dining room. There's also the fact that this dinner party would consist of seven smaller courses, something we know my brother-in-law would not be okay with. There have been incidents in the past where he harassed my wife over serving smaller portions in the past. This goes into a larger issue with him and food that I'm not going to bring up because I don't feel like arguing about it. With all of this in mind, when we signed on the advice, we excluded him from the list, but not her sister. When he called asking last night as to why he wasn't invited, I did not lie to him. It was because of his weight and his past actions regarding food and my wife. He lost his mind because we were excluding him because of his weight. He said this is unfair and that we were being bigots. I told him, yes, this is about his weight. That this night is about my wife and being able to fulfill her childhood dream, not about accommodating him and his mobility and food issues. This has caused a shitstorm. My wife's sister is now calling me a fatphobic asshole and has gone on Facebook and publicly shamed me and my wife. While my wife and everyone attending the party has told me that we should just ignore it, my friends have told me that I'm a major asshole and an elitist for all of this. Am I the asshole for not inviting my 500 plus pound brother-in-law to our dinner party? Am I the asshole for telling my therapist lies because I suspected she was telling my husband? I started seeing a therapist six months ago because I had postpartum depression. At first she really helped me, but then I noticed on two occasions my husband mentioned things I hadn't told him. 
but I had confided in my therapist. Since I had no proof and I didn't want to accuse either one of them, I decided to tell my therapist lies that I knew he would confront me on. And I really wanted to see if I was being delusional or not. The more I lied to her, the more suspicious I became too. Even little things that made my husband look awful was challenged by her and twisted to make him look good. Sounds like something's going on. Am I the asshole for telling my therapist lies because I suspected she was telling my husband? It took a while for him to confront me, but he did. At first, he never believed that I was lying during those sessions, but when I finally convinced him I was, he was furious with me. He said he only wanted to make sure I was okay, and he hadn't been using the therapist to spy on me. I actually have time after the story to share some opinions, and I have a lot of them. First of all, she needs to sue. Second of all, I feel like something weird's going on between the therapist and the husband. I don't want to speculate on someone's relationship, but I do see red flags. Am I the asshole for asking my sister to be a groomswoman? So my 25 male fiancé 24 female has never gotten along with my sister 18 female. My fiancé has never liked how close I am with my sister and it's been a cause of a few arguments. I proposed to my fiancé Sarah a few months ago and things have been going smoothly. In fact, I would say our relationship has never been better. A few days ago, Sarah listed to me all the people she wanted as bridesmaids and not surprisingly, my sister wasn't one of them. She said she was planning on asking them in a few more months to be in our wedding. Sarah then asked me if I knew who I wanted as a groomsman. Am I the asshole for asking my sister to be a groomswoman? I listed a few friends and then said I wanted my sister to be one of my groomsmen. This made Sarah upset and she said that it wasn't traditional for a woman to be a groomsman and that it would embarrass her. I explained to her that my sister was one of the most important people in my life and she was going to be in our wedding. Period. This made Sarah even more upset and she accused me of trying to ruin her wedding day. She then locked herself in the bathroom. It's been days since this and we haven't spoken at all. Her family reached out to me and asked me not to include my sister in the wedding at all and that Sarah should be the most important woman in my life.